Hello guys, I am Nidish Des Bagalwadi, your science teacher, Sankalp Learning Solutions. In the last class, we discussed regarding the properties of metals and physical properties of non-metals. Today, we are going to discuss regarding the chemical properties of metals. For this, we should just recall some of the concepts from uh, the first uh, chapter that is chemical reactions and equations as well as the second chapter that is acids, bases and salts from the chemistry topics. Okay, so today we are going to discuss regarding the chemical properties as the writing reaction takes much time. So that is why I have written the reactions before prior to the session itself so that uh, I can explain in a uh, more easy way like I can take my time to explain. Okay, so, so here the first one is as I uh, drew a tabular column so that it will be easy for you to understand and it will not make me to rub the board always or often. Fine. So the first one is metals react with the air. When metals react with the air or nothing but the oxygen, so they usually form their metal oxides. The products will be metal oxides and the reactant will be metal plus oxygen. So similarly, we see in such example in our first uh, or second chapter, copper when it reacts with oxygen, copper oxide is formed, which is black in color. So this will be black in color. Similarly, when we burn magnesium ribbon, it illuminates with a white glow light. We observed it that in a first chapter activity, right? So that white glow light and it converts into a ash later. Okay, white color, ash or a ash color, or gray color we can call. That is nothing but the magnesium oxide. Next, when aluminum uh, reacts with the oxygen, so we will get aluminum oxide. So basically what happens when metal reacts with the oxygen, when metal reacts with the oxygen, we will get metal oxides. We will get metal oxide okay the next one when metal oxide reacts with acids and bases when the metal oxides which are formed with uh, when they react with the oxygen when these metal oxides react with acids and bases what happens okay so for that uh, we perform we will uh, means we study the this activity in ninth standard we will burn the magnesium ribbon we will get the white ash that white ash is made soluble in a hot water. Then we will use the what we can call indicator, acid base indicator, which is a litmus paper. So that time what happens, the red litmus paper turned into blue. So when red litmus paper turned into blue, they that then we will call it as the oxide as a basic oxide. So visually we will prefer that all the metal oxides when they dissolve in water, when sorry, when they react with acids, they will be converted into the uh, basic oxides. But there are certain oxides when they react with acids and bases. So sometimes they will show or they will become acid, acidic oxides. Sometimes they will be basic oxides. Means they will show both the properties we can say. Uh, for example, uh, the aluminium oxides, aluminium oxide as well as the zinc oxide, when they react with acid like HCl or base like NaOH, they will show both the properties as acidic oxides and basic oxides. So such oxides which shows or which changes red litmus to blue as well as blue litmus to red, so such oxides are called as amphoteric oxides amphoteric so they will show the property of both acidic oxides and basic oxides so these are amphoteric oxides aluminium oxide as well as zinc oxide but usually the metal oxides will be basic in nature but some of the metal oxides show both the nature that is why those oxides are called amphoteric oxides right next uh, some of the metals, some of the oxides of metal like sodium and potassium, some of the oxides of metal like sodium and potassium, when they react with water, when they react with water, 
they form the solution which is called as alkali alkalis okay they form a solution which are called as alkalis so this is a sodium hydroxide this is a potassium hydroxide which are called as alkalis usually the metallic oxides are insoluble in water but some of the metallic oxides like sodium oxide and potassium oxide reacts with the water means they are soluble in water so when they are dissolved they will form a solution which are called as alkalis okay so what are alkalis these are nothing but the metal oxides when they dissolve in water they will form a solution which are called alkalis so this is regarding the certain chemical properties of the metals okay so like this uh, as we learned regarding the metals will be having higher melting point in the uh, physical property like that only we have certain concepts in the metals itself along with these okay fine so some of the metals so this is extra over here not extra the other notes i am writing here as it is filled with the table so here uh, some of the metals like sodium and potassium okay they react vigorously they react vigorously vigorously means what readily readily with oxygen at room temperature at room temperature they react vigorously or readily with the oxygen and then they catch the fire okay that is why these metals like sodium and potassium are preserved in kerosene they are preserved or stored in kerosene so that they will not react with the oxygen they will not readily catch the fire okay this is one of the point then then certain metals like aluminium okay certain metals like aluminium we know that in the kitchen we will use many aluminium vessels okay so why the vessels are made up of aluminium because they last long they last long okay and they are good conductors of heat okay so here why these last long because they are not easily corroded what do you mean by corroded they are not easily get defected or get damaged why because these aluminium vessels or the articles are coated are coated with aluminium oxide aluminium oxide layer these are coated with the aluminium oxide layer so that that aluminium oxide layer which is present outside the uh, it forms a uh, what is that thick cover thick cover of the aluminium article or of a aluminium vessel that aluminium oxide layer prevents aluminium to get corroded or prevents it from corrosion prevents it from getting defected prevents it from reacting with the moisture or air present in the atmosphere it will form a protective covering so that the aluminium will not react with the moisture or air present in the atmosphere so this protective uh, this process of forming a aluminium layer aluminium oxide layer for the aluminium articles is called as an and anodizing sorry anodizing 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 process means what it is the formation of aluminium oxide layer around the aluminium vessels or the articles so this is called anodizing process fine so this anodizing process will also give very shiny surface to the aluminium articles you can see that aluminium vessels or the articles will be very shiny it is due to this anodizing process right so during this process what they will do they will take the aluminium and they will dip in a hydrochloric acid they will pass the electricity okay so when metal oxide reacts with the acid 
so what happens the oxygen which is formed reacts with sorry when metal reacts with the acid what is formed there the salt plus hydrogen gas is released right so that oxygen what is released at the aluminium so that what happens means that sorry oxygen which is released it will react with the aluminium to form a coating around the aluminium article so which prevents it from getting corroded this process is called as anodizing process right so here okay so here what happens in the anodizing process we can say uh, an aluminium article is taken in a hydrochloric acid and it is made as anode it is made as anode so at the anode by electricity or electricity supply at the anode oxygen bubbles or oxygen is released so this oxygen which is released it reacts with the aluminium to form aluminium oxide which is Al2O3. So this Al2 oxide forms a thick layer around the article. Okay around the article it forms a thick layer. So this process is called anodizing. So this layer prevents the, the oxide layer aluminium oxide layer prevents the aluminium to get corroded okay it will be resistance to the moisture or the uh, atmospheric oxygen present in the surroundings so it will not be corroded it will not be damaged it will stay longer this is regarding anodizing process okay in the upcoming session we are going to learn few more chemical properties of uh, metals okay till that take care have a nice day bye